There is a museum. I'm gonna click on that. It's taking me to a thing. I'll have a look at this, and then I will... Welcome to the Museum of Orphaned Concepts, a guided tour of ideas that irrational games discarded or reworked heavily in the making of the original Bioshock. This game went through a lot of iterative design. Um, so, like, it was an entirely different... It was supposed to be World War II based, I think, originally, and it had elements of, like, cosmic horror, kind of Lovecraftian for a bit there. It was it was it was a really harrowing development by accounts. It was very crunch heavy. If that's that should be remembered. Yep, that's what you said before. I'm going to look through. So we got several iterations of the big daddies. Oh, this one what looks like he was fun to fight. Is there any text? Oh, okay. Exhibit slow profum. Irrational's internal name for this prototype big daddy variant who mauled players with an enormous hook. Fired from iron bearings from a barrel. Stood for slow projectile fucked up melee. Uh, he survived long enough to become a fully functional AI, but the team eventually cut him to focus on polishing the other Big Daddy types. This model later appeared in Bioshock 2 as the Rumbler, throwing miniature turrets instead of cannonballs. I'll keep that in mind when I get to Bioshock 2. The early Bouncer, the original model for the Bouncer type of Big Daddy, featured a flat-headed drill at the end of each arm. The Big Daddies were envisioned as the builders of Rapture, with weapons modified from tools they would have used in its construction. Uh, when the Gatherers will be imagined as little sisters, one of the Bouncer's drills was changed to a gloved hand, so the two characters could interact with each other. Yeah, the Gatherers used to be insects. I remember... Uh, reading about that is that they couldn't figure out uh, a way for you not to kill the insects, so they decided, make them small children. That will not cause any controversy. I don't think it did cause much controversy at the end. The game's fairly clear about, like, the morality of it, so I don't know if there was any real controversy around this game. What do we got? Exhibit Forest Concept Art. Irrational's artists tried to envisage how an underwater city would actually function in this early conceptual work of Rapture. One idea imagined a thick forest for the purpose of oxygen exchange, seen here with an observation catwalk running around the edge. The concept of using trees for oxygen uh, exchange made it into the final game as the Arcadia level, I was going to say. Uh, though, for this kind of thing, you would like you wouldn't really want trees, you'd probably want algae farms. That would probably be the best way to produce a large, dense amount of oxygen in a smaller space, rather than massive trees that are going to destroy infrastructure. Yet trees, the roots go everywhere and they'll just pull this thing apart over time. Uh, the Gatherer. Maybe hard to imagine that this creature, whose job it was to reclaim Adam from corpses around Rapture, was the earliest iteration of the idea behind the Little Sister. Since the Gatherer generated absolutely no sympathy from the players, the team experimented with concepts f um, for featuring a number of animals, including the infamous dog in a wheelchair, uh, and later a grotesque miniature humanoid. Eventually, the concept uh, sketch of a deformed child inspired the Eureka moment, responsible for the Little Sisters. And it was a it was an agonizing decision to to make that a reality because they really didn't know whether it was going too far to have. Uh, you basically either harvest or um, save basically little girls. Uh, exhibit Stitchy. The first splicer that Irrational created for Bioshock, Stitchy was used in many early concept demos and was fully functional in-game with kinematics, hit reactions, and voiceover. It took us that long to realize that he wasn't a good model, says the lead artist Sean Robertson. This is probably the worst uh, abortion that Irrational has ever made. I wouldn't use that term, but, um, I mean, it's gross, but it f I think it fits. I don't know if I would have, um, I don't know what the problem necessarily is with it. I mean, it looks horrible, obviously, but I think it's supposed to. I'm okay with that. Early splicer concept art. That massive deformed hand. I love that. Uh, body horror is so... I'm not a fan of it, but I am a fan of it simultaneously. It's weird. First concept, sketches to show Bioshock's enemies moving in a more hum human-like direction. Artists coupled that approach with the idea that Adam deformed the body in a way that related to its intended function. For instance, as a giant grotesque arm on a melee enemy. And then we got another one. Oh, that one looks cool. Look at that guy. Uh, these are some of the first sketches to show Bioshock's... Yeah, that's the same line. 
and uh, pray in hand. Before solidifying the fiction around Adam, a rational experiment with the idea of it being external injected substance. Here you can see us playing around with Adam being mechanically injected. Yeah, he's got the bottles on his belt leading into veins. He um, says lead artist, a lead artist, Sean Robertson. So the splicer got vials of its uh, got vials of it on its on its belt. This model was created but never made it into the game in any form. Hmm. The, it was a lot more horror focused. It didn't quite nothing quite scared me barring that one moment in the bloody um uh, tunnels where everyone came to life. Look at that. Moving from grotesque human was grotesque to human was a slow process. While early concepts saw that melee enemies grew monstrous arms, the team had trouble conveying how someone who had um, who had spliced to become a marksman would appear. Okay. Uh, early concepts for the rosy type of big daddy, who, like the bouncer, was envisioned as a construction worker who had been repurposed as a protector for the gatherers. They're in sort of diving suits. I know that much, and that's the that's the. We're closer to the final version of the Rosie. Yeah. I don't see fundamental difference. I probably, if, if you'd thrown one of those in, I probably wouldn't have necessarily noticed outright. Uh, oh, look at that guy. That looks like a really swift kind of Big Daddy. Big Daddies, originally called Protectors, were envisioned as dive-suited construction workers retasked with the defense of the Atom Gatherers. They used construction tools or improvised weapons that looked like they had been found on the seafloor. From left to right, our early concepts for the melee ranged and slow projectile type of uh, protectors. This guy's got a hook, but like attached via ropes to his stump. That's the melee focus, which became the rosy, and that is a plasmid focus, right? Slow projectile. I only ran into two times the rose, the two types, the rosy and the uh, and the bouncer. Big Daddy's originally called protectors. Yeah, that's the same. They're all the same. Don't miss. Nope. Uh, starting with this one. Oh, look at this guy. So this is, I think, a early concept for a spider splicer, if I would have guessed, based on the fact that he's holding sickles or hooks. Uh, the hooker. Created around the same time as, time as Stitchy the Grenad and the Grenadier, this splicer was dubbed as the Hooker because of her weapon of choice. This concept evolved into the Spider Slicer when it was decided that Splicer models could fill any behavior role and the Hooker model later became Baby Jane Splicer. I think that might come in later in the series. Maybe in Bioshock 2. Neptune's Bounty Concept Art. I like how ne Neptune's bounty looked up. That doesn't seem that distinctive, frankly, if I'm honest. Uh, this area appears in the Neptune's bounty level of Bioshock, but the bodies floating in the ocean were cut late in development when their cast shadows proved too distracting from the action in the room. Oh, okay. Okay, no, now I see it. So there were bodies outside, just having drowned, and it was leaking in. Environmental study location depicted here was built for the vision demo of Bioshock, a small uh, level demonstrating the de demonstrating several of the key elements of the game, such as the Big Daddies and the Gatherers. Okay, oh, that looks like a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. <laughs> this is not, am I the only one who thinks that? Never mind. Um, this grey elephantine splicer was an early grenadier from the same period of the development as the Stitchian hooker. He was a guy who spliced to carry around giant grenades and throw them at you. Uh, model was built in texture but never animated. Eventually got turned into the nitro splicer, I think. Alright. Fleet Hall concept art. This early concept for Sander Cohen's Fleet Hall was created after level building had begun. When the designers found they were having difficulty conceptualizing the theater space, it was one of the earliest spaces built for Bioshock, and many of the assets used in this museum came from that area. Oh, that's awesome! That looks amazing. That massive, like, classical theater. That looks great. Fleet Hall did feel like your average movie cinema. This, this feels grander in every respect. But you know, compromises, compromises have to be made. 
uh, iconic rapture concept. This was the first image that really captured all the visual elements that made Bioshock Bioshock. A large view of the ocean, the aquatic lighting scene, and the elegant art deco design elements. Without this image, Bioshock would have been a radically dis different beast. That's it. That's the origin of the game's visual design. Probably the most important piece of concept art here. I love looking at concept art. Especially, like, with the explanations of their relevancy. Early concept art depicting a Big Daddy bursting through a wall, which inspired the audio log in the Big Daddy training grounds about a rogue Big Daddy. The player encountered him at the end of the level. That was the guy. Okay, I remember. I think I missed that one. Huh. I didn't really even consider why the Big Daddy was attacking me. I just sort of did. <laughs> I just sort of, you know... Hard to really get caught up on why things are doing what they're doing in Rapture. Everything's insane there. This is a concept sketch depicting what would later become a submarine bay, an area which housed an important scene for Atlas. Not so important in the end, it was just a... they were fucking me about. Or Fontaine was fucking me about. Uh, Yam Hand Model. Yeah, okay. I see where you got that name from. Uh, this character, derisively called Yam Hand around Irrational Games, was the poster child of the conceptual, conceptual phase that preceded the decision to go with human enemies. I'd point out the drawings behind the model, says lead artist Sean Robertson. You can see the tops top one you can see the top one got built and the other two informed the design as well. As we trended more towards humanoids, the Scooby monsters got less got goofier and less scary. Hmm. Well, I wasn't scared by anything really in this game. Maybe this one would have been a bit like okay, that looks a bit silly. I'll be honest, that big Mutant hand is a little odd. Uh, missing link model. Big boy. They're all really, they're all way bigger than they ended up being. Uh, character essentially the missing link. This character is essentially the missing link between the grotesque early designs and the human splices that appeared in Bioshock. This is the last bad model we did before moving on to what actually went into shipping, into the shipping game says Sean Robertson. After playing with him for a while, we said, why don't we just do humans instead? I always thought of these as Scooby-Doo monsters because they were too inhuman to invoke empathy. That is true. Part of the sort of, like, sadness of Rapture is that they're all people. They're not monsters. They don't appear to be monsters. They're just human beings who got, you know, pulled into or spliced into horrors, but... They don't look grotesque, they just look deformed. So I guess there is some, like, visual design. I do think this is quite, some of these designs are quite striking, but I do understand why they got rid of them. And uh, now we're getting Doom Monsters. This is interesting. Very early creature concepts were, these would have looked a bit, I mean, the design on these monsters is, I love this kind of, like, kind of artwork of demons and stuff that's all really great but yeah these would have looked out of place earliest pieces done for bioshock from back when irrational was still working on swat 4 the only concrete di uh the only concrete ideas at this point were were an undersea city and biological experimentation so early concept focused on these themes okay yeah but they look like hell monsters they don't really look like mutants they got a bit of a fishy aspect to them, I suppose. Um, early Big Daddy concept art. Very robotic. Like, old-school robotic. Like something you'd see in a 60s sci-fi show. This was the fourth, the fourth projector con uh, protector concept. Originally created with an organic slug attached to it. So that's the slug. Uh, not really a slug, more of a crustacean. A model was started but never completed as the two as the team ideas narrowed their focus to three and finally just two big daddy types. I still like this as a protector, says artist Rob Waters. We started modeling and I just really pushed to get it in, even as just a static model on the floor, but it never made it. I like the robotic design. I mean it looks it looks like a really old school idea of a robot, that kind of like big clunky segmented legs and the 
kind of vacuum cleaner tubing in and all. It does look very striking. Finally, iconic Rapture concert. So one of several pain paintings that tried to portray the most e important elements of Rapture at once. These images would help define the ruined underwater Art Deco aesthetic that the team was attempting to capture. I think they were successful. I think that's it. I think that's the entire museum. And you got these, like, full scale. That's straight Art Deco. I don't know why, but, um, oh. Hanging Sea Life. Yeah, that was a whale, I think. Uh, hold on. Not as much a cut concept as an Easter egg for the observant museum visitors. These sea creatures can be seen swimming past the player's view during the bathysphere ride down to Bio Rapture in Bioshock's opening sequence. Yeah, I saw the whale in the um thing. I guess they weren't expecting me to look up. So, oh yeah, here we go. Yeah, there's one of the whales. Uh, some squid. I didn't see the anglerfish, but I saw the whale and the squid. It's hard to miss the squid. That's the first thing you see. This friggin' shark. I mean, good. I would not want to be in front of that one. <laughs> and then the uh, whale skeleton, which was in the museum. There's it? Nope. I think that's everything in here now. That's the museum. What a cool friggin' piece to have in a game. How awesome is this? Can I have a look at the city? Just if I stand back in here, can I look at the skybox? What's that? No. Fleet Hall. Andrew Ryan presents the Kickettes two weeks of two weeks only. Bistro over there. Just look at that. That's so sweet. Alright. Now I'm going to head uh, back into the game and pick up whatever audio logs I've missed so far. Um, I'll cut through that. I'm still wearing my boots, by the way, but you can't see them. Um, I'm going around picking up the ones I've missed. Vandalism. It has been brought to my attention that some one. citizens have discovered ways to hack the vending machines should not need to remind each and every citizen of Rapture that free enterprise is the foundation upon which our society has been established. Parasites will be punished. Don't hack it or you're a parasite. How did I miss that one? I definitely went in here. I remember that. Okay, never mind. One slightly annoying part is I'm going to have to clomp around because that was the last save I've got that uh, allowed me access to Point Prometheus. <laughs> I'm just going to be clomping around. Alright, there's apparently one in here. There we are. Poro silk and down. The nose looks terrific, Dr. Steinman. Doctor? You know, looking at it now, I didn't realize how much your face sags. Scalpel? Excuse me? Scalpel. Uh, Doctor, she's not booked for a facelift. Let's just come in here and... Doctor, stop cutting. Doctor, stop cutting. Get me the chief of surgery. Get me the chief of surgery now! Mm, do not like that. Oh, God. Yes. <laughs> I'm not sure who's the biggest monster. Probably Steinman. I mean, elective surgery. Elective... Plastic surgery is probably about as... Sorry, non-consensual plastic surgery, I should say. You can have elective surgery, but non-consensual. I don't like that much at all. Uh, that's everything in the medical pavilion. Now on to what I've forgotten in Neptune's Bounty. Bathysphere keys. We're putting all the bathyspheres in lockdown until further notice. Ryan had us install some kind of genetic device into the thing, so only Ryan and his inner circle will be able to use them without dispensation. <laughs> but the boys tell me the keys are pretty unreliable. Sisters, cousins, anybody in the ballpark genetically will be able to come and go as they see fit. Like his child, perhaps. His genetic child. So, of course, Ryan gets free access around Rapture. Nobody else does. 
his public transport net uh, network. What an absolute hypocrite. There's one I believe that is supposed to be here, but isn't. And I can't seem to find it. It may have... I, I don't think I've got it. The one I'm looking at, I'm using the wiki to uh, identify it because I don't want to go hunting down every inch of this bloody map. I've, you know, I've got other things to do with my day. But um, I don't think I've got this one left. It's supposed to be on this pile of blood, but there's no body. It's supposed to be on a body that's, or in a body that's on there, and there's just nothing around here. So I guess I just will never find out how Sullivan picked up Timmy H. Unless I just read the wiki page, which I might just do, or listen to it, because it's uploaded there. Anyway, um, sorry, I can't, I can't give you that one. I missed this room entirely, I think. Hello. Let's deal with that guy. You know what? I'm not gonna bother. You know... No, I don't seem to be able to get... Yeah. That's not what I meant to do. Hang on a second. No, I can't break my way in. Ah, I'm gonna crawl under here. Um. Pushed him to death. Uh, yeah. Just wanted to check in here. Since I hadn't been in here, maybe there was something in here I wanted. I didn't fully check. Alright. Apart from this bloody big daddy stomping around in my... What are you doing here? Oh, he's going to that. Alright. I'll listen to that. Rapture changing. Rapture's changing, but Ryan can't see the wolves in the woods. It's Fontaine, fella. And a proper tea leaf, but he's got the Adam, and that makes him the governor. Sinking the profits back into bigger and better plasmids, building them Fontaine poorhouses, <laughs> like Fontaine recruiting centers. Before we know it, Bo's gonna have a, an army of splices. We're gonna have ourselves a whole heap of miseries. See, that would have been nice to know earlier on. <laughs> um, I completely missed that somehow. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, you miss things. That is the nature of exploration games, especially when it's just come to lore. It's like, you can't be cognizant of everything at all times. I can't keep a running track of which rooms I've been in, which I haven't. I apparently missed this entire doorway. And another one. I still don't know how I missed that, but, you know. There it is. close to Ryan's gate as possible without making a spectacle of myself. He's got a shield at six ways to Leicester. There's no way into that place. All I got for my trouble was the hairy eyeball from Ryan's splicer mates. Oh, that's the reward you get for trying to outsmart the best electrical engineer of our generation. Yeah, okay. Well, that's just filler information, frankly. I, I knew we couldn't get into Ryan's office easily. All right, next on the agenda. I completely didn't see this, and you can kind of see why. It's so dark down here. But, uh... Yeah. Grab loot. I don't know why I'm looting. I'm done. <laughs> but, uh, have it, I suppose. Market maintenance code. Get back in there to do maintenance. 
Okay, 0512. I'll keep that in mind. I want to go find the um, access. Now, let's just read what he said. I'm going to have to listen to it again. Because... I tracked the problem that was blocking the tubes here, and you'll never believe where I ended up. <laughs> the damn farmer's market, clear on the other end of Rapture. 0512, where would that be? Some new gaskets. What a mess. Anyway, the code is 0512 if you ever need to get back in there to do maintenance. Alright, I guess I'm heading over to the farmer's market next. I think I found it. Zero, five, one, two. The pump room in the farmer's market. This apparently has access... This is where you would get uh, napalm for the first time for probably, I think. I don't think you get napalm earlier. It's a neat room. There's nothing in here of any particular interest. But hey. Alright, we're in Culpepper's apartment in uh, Mercury Suites. And I missed this one. Artist Woman. I didn't even go in here. I think it was a bit too much for me. I meant to come back to Olympus Heights. Sullivan was clearly having doubts long before. Do we ever find out what actually happened to Sullivan? Uh, I don't... I, either I did. I think he turned in his badge, but I don't know if he survived. Uh, I'll see if I can find where Culpepper is. She might just be around here. You go in to die. I think I think that'd be cold pepper. Yeah. Just stomping around this. You think that might have been uh, Sullivan there? Standing over him? Standing over her? Probably not, but you know, it's a interesting notion. Get in the bathtub with her. I ran the bathtub. Alright, that's one more. Onwards. Alright, I'm up in Hestia fourth floor. I missed one here. Today's raid. So, what killed her? Was it Fontaine? She smashed a desk. Yeah, they went on raids. They harvested the little sisters for only 34. I can get 200 out of them. No, 160 out of them. If I harvest them. Hold on a second. I'm about to do something I am not proud of. I have been... I have returned back to quite an older save. Uh, back in Neptune's Bounty. In order to find, uh, a little sister. I'll have to get through a Big Daddy first, and then I'm gonna try something. I think you know where this is going. Um... Let's deal with this. Dealt with. Okay. 
I think you, I think everyone knows what's gonna happen here. You see, I've rescued all the little sisters in the game. That is the canon ending, of course. But I don't know what happens when you harvest them. Now, um, I don't think it's gonna be pleasant. Um. <sighs> Alright. Alright, let's do this. Just, just once. This is in an old safe. Oh god, I can't. <laughs> oh no. Oh, that would be the slug then. Okay. That wasn't so bad. I was worried it was gonna like... I was expecting something a little more gruesome than that. It's implied. But, um... I ripped that, presumably, out of her... Out of her body, so, um... Yeah, I don't feel good. But it was less gruesome than I was expecting. I thought they'd just... I was expecting her, him to just literally rip it out of her brain or something. Why am I going around pe picking up bits and pieces? Uh, even though I've finished the game? Nope, just doing it. So, barring two, I think, barring two recordings, I've listened now to all of the uh, audio logs. Two of them didn't spawn, I don't know why. One of them, obviously, you saw in Neptune's Bounty, and one of them was in Arcadia. I didn't bother recording that one. And... I've been to the museum. I've harvested one little sister and refused to do that again. I've played the entire game. I am now officially, as far as I'm concerned, to within reason, complete. With Bioshock. Now it is time to move on to Bioshock 2. <laughs> 